Hello everyone, and welcome back to our strange past. Today we're exploring the dark and disturbing story of Father Gerald Ridsdale, a former Australian Catholic priest whose heinous crimes shocked a nation and the church that did not stop him. Gerald Ridsdale was born in 1934 in Victoria, Australia. He was ordained as a Catholic priest in 1961 and served in various parishes throughout Victoria. On the surface, Ridsdale appeared to be a dedicated and caring priest. But behind closed doors, he had a very dark secret. Even at his first assignment at St. Olympias, a boys' school in Ballarat, there were allegations he had molested a boy. However, the boy's parents were reluctant to let their son be questioned by police, and Ridsdale denied everything. The police turned to Ronald Mulkerns, who was the bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese at the time. He claimed to have no knowledge of this, but would handle Ridsdale. His way of dealing with this seems prevalent in the Catholic Church. He moved him to another parish, and then another, and unbelievably, several more. The church claimed it had no knowledge of his actions, and yet, from 1976 to 1986, he was moved to four different churches, including assignments in the larger cities of Melbourne and Sydney. Eventually, in 1986, the church sent him to America, where he had secret treatments at a facility in New Mexico. After nine months of treatments, he returned to Australia and was given another appointment as chaplain at St. John of God Hospital in Richmond, New South Wales. Within the next year, more allegations of child sexual abuse began to surface. Finally, the police launched an investigation. As these investigations unfolded, it became clear that Ridsdale's crime spanned decades and involved numerous victims. They also concluded that the Bishop Mulkerns knew about Ridsdale's crimes earlier than he admitted and was found he was derelict in his duty. In 1993, Ridsdale was charged with multiple counts of sexual assault against children. The allegations spanned over 30 years, with victims ranging in age from four to 16 years old. As the case unfolded, it became clear that Ridsdale's actions were not isolated incidents, but rather part of a systematic problem within the Catholic Church. Without going into each of the sad and dark details, Ridsdale was convicted of sexually abusing over 60 children and was sentenced to 18 years in prison. Some were as young as four years old. They found he had molested children everywhere, in churches, schools, and even his own car. Ridsdale sexually abused boys as early as 1955, when he was 21 years old, and the church has sent him to a psychologist as early as 1971. Once again, the bishop, Ronald Merkins, claimed he had no idea of this or any of Ridsdale's actions. After his first trial, more victims came forward as he was faced with additional trials in 2006, 2014, and 2017. His total prison sentence was extended to 34 years, with a no parole for at least 28 of them. In every case, he never expressed remorse. Only, he expressed regret that the church did not stop him. In September of 2019, the Diocese of Ballarat released a statement where they admitted that high-ranking clergy in the diocese knew of many sexual abuse claims against Ridsdale. And, instead of removing him from service, they made efforts to shield him from prosecution. They admitted to being complicit, yet no one from the church was prosecuted. Eventually, the Australian government established a royal commission into responses of child sexual abuse. This commission found that the church had indeed failed to protect children not only from Ridsdale, but, sadly, other abusive priests. It is so sad and troubling that the case of Gerald Ridsdale like so many others around the world, were not dealt with properly by the church. Moving a pedophile does not stop a pedophile, and yet we have seen and heard the same story time and time again. This case is a harrowing reminder of the importance of addressing and preventing child sexual abuse within institutions. It also emphasizes the importance of listening to and supporting survivors of abuse, as their voices are crucial in bringing about change. We hope this video has provided valuable insight into the issue of child sexual abuse and the importance of addressing it. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with others who may be interested.
Until next time, take care.